Hi everyone, I'm Jo Barclay Logie and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're looking at a stitch, a technique, and it's a spiraled tubular peyote stitch. And the reason I'm doing it is because I recently shared this necklace. There's, it's got a pendant, but it's this part that we're really interested in. It's the beaded rope and it's using two colors and you get that lovely spiral effect. It's really sturdy. It's not squishy. It's used size 8 seed beads, so it beads up really quickly. I do have a video already on tubular peyote, which I will pop the link to in the description if you've never done tubular peyote stitch before. Of course, you need to know about peyote stitch, so if you've not done peyote, I have the more basic flat even count peyote stitch. So I'll pop all the links in the description for you. But we're gonna look at the spiral. In fact, in the original tubular peyote video, I do touch on the spiral technique, but it's over halfway through the video. And let's face it, who spends a long time watching a video? You wanna see it happening now. So that's what we're gonna look at today, the tubular spiral peyote. Before we go any further, I always do this at the end of my videos, but who watches to the end? Not many people. So please, if you're enjoying my content, please just hit that subscribe button. Subscription is the wrong word. You're not paying for it. It's a free subscription. All it means is that when I load up new content, you'll get a little notification to say, ding dong, Joe's added something new that you might be interested in. Take a look. It really does help me grow as a channel and continue to create content for you. So I'd be really grateful if you did that. Right, moving on. That's all the admin out the way. Here is our beautiful beaded rope in spiral tubular peyote stitch. I'm gonna use two different colors today. I used this lovely opaque turquoise green and a silver. And today I am using a black and a metallic sea green. I'm using size eight seed beads. You could do it in 11s, in 15s, in delicas. You could do it in true to fire polish if you wanted to. Using eights means you get a slightly chunky rope. You can see next to my finger, it's nice and chunky. It's sturdy and it beads up really quickly. So if you're trying it for the first time, I would suggest using eights. You want two colors. I've got my needle and I'm using a black satin fire line today. And I have this little gadget here. It's a mandrel. If you don't have a mandrel, don't worry. You could use a pen or a pencil. It will work just as well. Use a workable length of thread. You don't wanna get yourself tangled up in knots. I find a wing span, wing with a W, which goes from the tip of the middle finger on my left hand to the tip of the middle finger on my right hand with my arms outstretched. That's a wingspan. And you can always add in thread if you need to, it, particularly if you're making a necklace, a beaded rope for a necklace, you cannot do it on one length of thread. You will need to add in more. So we're going to add an even number of beads and I'm going to pick up one black and three green and I'm gonna do that three times. So a set of four, three times to give me 12 beads. And one more, one, two, three. So I've got 12 beads on my needle there. And I'm gonna move them down to the end. I'm gonna leave a 15 to 20 centimeter tail. I can use that at the end of my beaded rope to add on one end of my clasp if I wanted to, or I might want to add on a couple of gemstones. If I bring this back in, you'll see at the end of my beaded rope, I added on a gemstone before adding on my clasp. So it's always wise to leave yourself a decent tail. Now, I'm going to pass my needle back up through all those beads. If you can't do it in one go, do it in sections. The important thing is to pass through all the beads so that you don't have thread showing on one side as you skip over one. And as you pull it round, it's gonna pull into a loop and I'm just going to pass through that first black one as well, just to complete the little circle. So if I pull my tail and my working thread through, I've got my first little circle. 
Now we want to start getting the tube going and we all know when we start bead weaving there's very little to hold on to and you can get finger tied. Sometimes I get tongue tied talking to you but you can get finger tied and you'll get caught up in your thread. So if you've got a mandrel or a pencil or a pen it certainly makes your life a lot easier. And I'm just going to slip that on there. I'm holding the tail in my left hand and I'm holding the mandrel in my left hand, leaving my dominant hand ready to bead. Now, to get that beautiful spiral, the trick is the bead you're going to pick up is the color that your thread is exiting from. So, peyote stitch, pick up a bead, skip a bead, pass through a bead. If you need a refresher, just click through the, the description and you'll find all the links to my previous demos. Right, so I'm going to pick up a black, I'm going to skip over a bead and I'm passing through the next green. And because I'm on a mandrel, I can now push that bead with my thumb into place. And that is not the easiest to see, that wasn't a clever choice of beads, Joe, black on a black mandrel, but it's a bit more shiny. Now I'm exiting a green, so I'm going to pick up a green skip over the next green and I'm going to pass through the black. So you can see it's very fiddly in the beginning, there's nothing to hold on to and that mandrel gives you a bit of length so that you've got something to hold on to. Now I'm exiting a black. Now if we picked up 12 beads in our first round, our second round is going to be 6 beads because we're picking up, skipping over, going through. And this is my third bead. So a third bead is my black bead and I'm passing through a green, having skipped over one of my greens. Promise by the time we get to the third round, it's easy because you've got those lovely sticky outies. I'm exiting a green, I skip over a green and I pass through the next black. Just pop it in place there. And now I'm exiting a black. I skip over a green and I pass through the next green. You just want to make sure that those beads are sitting on top of the previous ones. Right, so I've added five beads. I'm about to add my sixth one and it's a green, I'm exiting a green, and this is my step up now. So I'm gonna go through the first black of the first round, and I'm also going to step up through the first black of the second round. So when you step up, you'll always be passing through two of the one color. In my case, it's the black, or color A. Right, so round two is complete and I'm keeping it on the mandrel for now because there's still not too much to, to grab hold of. But you can see my thread is exiting a black. So I pick up a black. Now I'm going through the sticky outies, which is the green. This is the start of round three. All the time pulling your thread through tightly so that you're keeping tension on your beaded rope. Now we're exiting a green. We pick up a green and we go through the sticky outie black. Exiting a black, we pick up a black and we go through the sticky outy green. And so on. As we go around, I'm making my way to my last bead where I'm going to show you the step up again. So that's my fifth bead. And you can count them as you go around. Now this is my sixth bead and my step up. So it's a green and I've got to pass through two blacks. I've got to pass through the first black from the previous round and the first black from this round. That is my step up. So I've got three rounds completed. Right, we're starting round four. Here's my first one. One. The beads are starting to sit in position now without me having to push them up above the bead before. Two. Let go of my tail and then it got in the way. 
three. And then the sixth one is the step up through two. So up through two of my blacks. Right, you can see the spiral is starting to form there. So in true blue Peter style, I'm just going to slip that off and bring in one that I've gone a bit further on. So you can see it a bit more clearly. Yeah? You can see I'm using white thread on this one. So let's just do another row while it's on the mandrel. Here's the first one of the row. The second one. Always picking up the color that you've just exited from. That's the third one. That's the fourth one. Here comes my fifth through the sticky outy. And now my sixth one is my step up. So just as we were doing before, I'm passing up through two for the step up. Now I've got sufficient there. I don't need to be using my mandrel or my pencil anymore because I've got enough to hold on to and continue beading just as if I was on a mandrel. You can see that wonderful tube through to my mat there that you formed, your beaded rope. So here's the second one. Here's the third one. And I'm just turning it in my fingers, just as I was twisting the mandrel round as I went round. I'm just turning it in my fingers as I pass through those sticky outies now. And here's my step up and I pass through two to step up. Now you can see I'm squishing this. It's, it is squishable if you apply pressure, but it does hold its tubular shape really quite well. You could always put a piece of cord through there if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. So there you have your tubular spiral peyote. And I know that there are a few other basic techniques that people want to learn, like ending off a thread, adding in a thread. So check back regularly if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and there'll be more videos to follow soon. Thanks for your time. Bye.